see, the thing is, you pandered to black women when you did what you did to a black woman with no remorse. And then went on a white man's platform who exploits black culture on a regular basis to let him know, as black women, you did what you had to do. Let me tell you, I'm going to shut this stuff down now because I want y'all to respond. The TikTok energy, I just, I don't care. <sighs> For the past two years, subs have been thrown. For the past two years, when I reach out directly, it gets ignored. Or I get blocked by Hoochie Horse on several different, yeah. Please tell them girls, tag them, tag them that it's been two years, but a conversation between the three of us is long overdue. And yo, yo, yo. This is Peanut, digital baby mom. Like, comment, and subscribe so you can pay for this motherfucking child support. Y'all know he broke his hand, so y'all know we need all that motherfucking money. Yeah. And don't forget, my name is Peanut. Show me some love, too. Mm. Olivia Dope. She used to be on the JVP Network. She looks so down bad right now. She gonna get signed to the Digital Thugs Network. Why this bro hating on Joe Budden? But she need to go sell a brick. But she's the victim. Joe did her wrong allegedly. So I uh, allegedly she J Joe did her wrong. So now damn bro, I will say this. She does have a good point. So anyway, Joe Budden's ex employee Olivia Dope, who let who he allegedly assaulted on camera, came out. Um, and allegedly called out Joe Budden for pandering to black women, but also being the dude to hurt many black women, which outside of Olivia Dope, there's always been rumors about him and Esther Baxter, him and all this, like, there's always been rumors about Joey, man, there's always been rumors about JoJo, I don't know what's true, but some of it gotta be true, let's be honest about it, bro, so as far as Shorty, I'ma say this, Shorty, get the F out of here, bro, like, you allegedly sue, sue homie and you won. So shut the F up. Get your coins and go, dog. But I, I ain't going to hold you. You are making a good point, though. A lot of people handle the certain communities. Um, and, like, they'll say that in the public. Like, on public forums, they'll, you know, they'll pander. Yo, we're LGBT strong. But in private, they might, you know, diss the LGBT. Or um, in private, a dude might say, yo, I'll never smash a fat chick. Ew. But on camera, he might say, Hey, man, all women are beautiful, and hey, man, uh, all women are beautiful and healthy at every size, and a 700-pound a, a, a chick should be able to get a high-value, six-foot, six-figure earning man. Yeah, they might say Murder B, camera. you see you crash my behind the scenes, you're like, every fat bitch should die sure you ever. Give me my might, bread or that's the truth. problem, my thing gangster. Is I think it's a little true for Joe. I think it's a little true for all of us. Even when, when you're at work, you might have certain thoughts. You're not going to say it at work. It's called discretion, discretion. But at the same time, I'll say this for Joe. He puts out so much content that sometimes he just be saying shit to say shit. And at the end of the day, in the content space, there is like an understanding of like, yo, you have to like, <laughs> there's, there's not a podcast in the world that's going to that's come out and say, you know what? Fuck black women. Fuck gay people. That. That'll never happen ever. That'll be the that'll be a last day podcasting ever. So every podcast gotta follow kind of follow that, you know, that thread of, you know, standing with black women, standing with gay people, all that kind of stuff. Even if they don't believe in it. Me personally, I believe in it, but I'm just saying, like a lot of podcasts has to follow that thread regardless. Unless, you know, you might get canceled. Let's be honest about it.